Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, listeners. We welcome you to this day on the Daily, the Daily Fountain of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion today, 5th of December, 2020. And the topic before us this morning is, you can do it. Let us pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this day for the grace and the enablement of a new day like this. Lord, may your name be exalted in Jesus' name. Father, as we go into your word, we pray that may you speak to us in the language of our understanding. And so that your word may profit us, we bless us, and you keep us the more. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You can do it. The text of our Bible study this morning is the Exodus chapter 3, and we read from verses 11 through 22. So I read very quickly. But Moses said to God, Whom I am, that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. So he said, I will certainly be with you. And this shall be a sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus, you shall say to the children of Israel, I am, has sent me to you. Moreover, God said to Moses, Thus, you shall say to the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial to all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say to them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob appeared to me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen what is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Evites and the Jebusites to a land flowing with milk and honey. Then they will hear your voice and you shall come and you and the elders of Israel, to the king of Egypt, and you shall say to him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has met me with us, and now please let us go three days, three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not even by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand, and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in its midst. And after that, it will let you go. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty handed. But every woman shall ask for her neighbor, namely of her dwells near her house, articles of silver, articles of gold and clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters, so you shall plunder the Egyptians. This is the word of the Lord. This morning we said you can do it. God knows your capacity and he knows your strength. Quite often, people who are fit for great mission often think themselves unfit, just like you and I sometimes. Considering the state in which Moses found himself, it was natural for him to act the way he did. Moses had big doubt about his ability to lead. He resisted God, bringing up his unworthiness and lack of authority, his fear of the people's distrust, his speech difficulties, and sheer cowardice. Imagine how Moses 
must have felt when God called him again that he will be the one to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. He had already tried once to rescue the Hebrews, the Hebrew slaves, and he failed. It's no surprise that when God told Moses to return to Egypt, Moses immediately began listing his excuses for not going. In fact, Moses listed about five different excuses and he laid them unto God. For example, we can see excuse number one. Who am I? If you look at verse 11 of where we read, Moses argued and he struggled with identity. He just didn't feel qualified. He thought God had picked the wrong leader. But God replied, it doesn't matter who you are, I am with you. Verse 12. This is a very strong proof from God. God told him that he is going to be with him. This is a very visible proof or guarantee that God had promised he will surely fulfill whatever he told him to do. And so, therefore, people of God, we need to understand how Moses, when he immediately began to list his excuses for not going, Moses wasn't simply trying to disobey. He probably felt inadequate. Imagine how Moses must have felt when God called him that he would be the one to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses immediately began listing his excuses for not going. Moses wasn't simply trying to disobey God. He probably felt inadequate. Like I said, the excuse number two, who are you even if I want to go? What do I tell them? Moses felt a lack of intimacy. He didn't know God. He didn't know God very well to describe him to the people and lacked convictions concerning the relationship with God. However, God again replied, I am who I am. I am ever present. I am everything you need. Brethren, have you ever felt that way too? I don't have a lot of talent. I'm not a person of influence. What can I do? We all feel insecure at times, but we don't have to depend on our strength. God has promised to be with us, just as he has, he has, and he has promised Moses. When God asks us to do something, he will give us the ability and resources to do it. The, excuse, the third excuse that Moses gave, that what if they don't listen? This again, Moses felt intimidated. He worried about the people's reaction to him. And again, God replied that when I am finished, they will listen. And so people of God, put yourself in the same picture and imagine what it looked like to be called out, to be called out from the bush to go and give the president of your country the kind of message Moses received. But God was not asking Moses to walk alone. He would go with him. This is a very visible guarantee that what God has promised, he will surely fulfill. We, we look at Exodus chapter 4 verse 8. Also, Genesis chapter 15 verse 8 made us understand that whenever God promised to do something, definitely he will stand by it and he will do. Another thing Moses feared was how to convince his own people on the mission, his previous experience with them, when he wanted to assist them, was not encouraging because he was exposed for committing murder. But one with God is majority. This time, there was no cause for alarm. He was to walk under divine protection and leading. God will only use him to fulfill his purpose. Just like what we did here, what we had yesterday. That God himself again, he had 
divine arrangement for everything. There's a particular arrangement that he has already. And so with what he's telling us this morning, that we should not belittle ourselves, that we can also do it. He's there to empower us. He's there to give us that good strength that we need. And so therefore, Moses, again, is if ready for him to, to accomplish what God has told him to do, definitely God will work it with him under his leading. God will only use him to fulfill his purpose because we are born for a purpose. You are born for a purpose. Every experience of your life may be to succeed at, in that purpose. You need to be careful not to reject that calling. If you are sensitive in that spirit, you will know the call of God upon your life. It may be to help others. It may be to encourage the weak. You may, it may also be to bring the knowledge of Christ to your people. It may also be to change things around you for good. Look at this. Look, look at the, the, the current situation that we find ourselves in our nation now. We don't need to continue to argue with God. Moses told God, I have never been a good speaker. But God challenged him that, guess, Moses, who made your mouth? That was when Moses told God. When he fretted about his inadequacies, who would listen to me if I, I couldn't speak well? But by the special grace of God, whatever happens, God himself said it that, okay, I will let Aaron go with you so that it will not be only you. So, people of God, we need to understand that Moses, though he felt inferior, yet he compared himself to others, even his brothers, and decided that he can come up with it. Brother, sisters, daddy, and mommy, this morning, we need to understand that God is setting us aside. He's giving us a good calling and he's telling us we can do it. What is that position that God is calling you to act? What is that situation that God, that God is calling you to make it up? So people of God, this morning, we want to assure ourselves that God is there to help us. God is there to, to be with you. You can do it just like Moses. So this morning, just want to encourage you that you can do it. What you need to do is to accept the offer and to do it. And I pray that as you, call, as you do that, the Lord will be with you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you this morning for your word that you have spoken. That even in our weakness, that you, you are still there to encourage us and to strengthen us. Father, the inward of your word this morning let it bring out the stimulus in our lives. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. To alert the sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen.